How are we doing, guys? What up, Gregory? Yeah, I'm a. Uh, I'm old and boring, so, and I don't drink at all. So this is what I'm doing on my New Year's Eve. Tried to add a little bit of light in here. I can't remember who it was that said something about it, but they uh, they had brought up that the lighting was pretty crappy, and it is. It's dark over here, but I usually don't need a big space to be able to sharpen a chainsaw. All right, Chris made awesome. Sweet. We got Dustin. What's up, Dustin? Yeah, I don't, I don't drink at all, so not, not much for being around people when they are drinking either. Kind of. I, I don't know. Some people can drink, and it's not a big deal. That's just what they do. But I guess partying, I just, it's not my thing. Not my thing anymore. I don't want to get in trouble. And I got this thing messed up to where the camera's on this side. I should have flipped my phone, but yeah. we'll make it work. Did you Greg, you? Funny. Right on. What's a... Uh... Anybody else got any plans for this evening? Are they going out to do anything? Or are you guys off the probably the ones that'll be on here will be all probably the homebodies that aren't gonna get out and do anything this evening. They're gonna not be in jail in the morning. Which was usually my problem. So Yeah. Yeah, I've had a chaotic like last couple hours I was trying to be nice and uh, I was helping out because I found uh, that somebody a company had dropped a log in these people's front yard and didn't pick it up so uh, hey Steve um, so I went over there and started cutting it up bringing it home for firewood and stuff and I just put a crane arm a manual crane arm on my uh other trailer. I'm gonna put an electric winch and stuff on. I'll show you guys all that with videos. But uh, I was over there. I've been there twice, and I took a slab out of the tree, made a table and stuff. Here, I'll show you guys the table. It is right there. Pretty crappy lighting. Let me get the light on. better yeah yeah I took that I took that slab this was all one slab you can see the it had some good holes and stuff in it and I took an old fish tank stand and turned that stand into a nice little table so I went back to that job and I was picking up some, there's another piece of the slab that's not finished or anything, what was left over. Came out pretty good, didn't it? At least I thought it did. Um, so I went back over to that job and I was picking up some firewood. And the homeowner came out and I guess they've been saving up their anger for when the guy came back. Because he hasn't come back. And uh, he's taking it out on me. I had to explain to him, no, 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 no. I'm just that nice guy that was here trying to help out. And maybe gain you as a customer because you hired the wrong guy. And uh, so that was pretty chaotic. I ended up having to cut the lady a slab. I th think I ended up getting a small job out of it, but and a little bit of firewood. Yeah, that was chaotic. I was talking to a guy from New York while she was mad. 
I'm just there to help somebody and pick up some firewood that I don't even want. So, yeah, I was just a little, little aggravated during it all. But, home now. Can relax. And, of course, I gotta have one of them evenings where it's real crazy and chaotic. And I knew I'd promised I was gonna do a live feed, so I was hoping there were some of you that are at home like me and aren't out doing anything. Let me catch up on a couple comments here. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I was just doing it to be nice. And it, they, were, they were okay. They were okay. After I kind of told him, dude, you can keep your log and I'm going to leave. And then they just got really nice. So I was trying to help the guy who did it because I know him. And I was trying to help them. And it let me try out my little crane arm thing that I have. And uh, the thing works really good. And I could get a little bit of firewood. So it really wasn't worth my time. So, yeah. Aggravating. But here we go. Let's, uh, let's do something interesting. This right here. Got a new handsaw. Christmas. That's what my wife got me. It's the uh, new largest one from Steel. I've never, I've never owned one new. So I had one old, small one, which is I'd like to replace the blade, but I got it from somebody and the they're all rusted. So you can can't even get them off there. I'll get them off for it one day. Now, what I was saying, as far as climbing gear goes, um, and what I use, if we disregard ropes, because I keep all my ropes in one big tub that locks up, it's got some wheels on it, I'll, show you, I'll pull it out one day and show you guys everything that I have in there, I have all kinds of stuff, but, uh, my saddle, my spikes, and my ropes all go in there. So, a couple grapple ropes that I've made with grapple hooks are in there. Um, and then I have another tub box, which we'll do part two of what's in the box. We may do a three part. We'll do the big box with all the main, like the gear, like climbing gear stuff. We'll do that one time. So we'll do three of them. This will be the first one. This is just climbing gear. And, um, well, I guess I'm kind of lying a little bit. This little bag right here, it's one of those luggage. Oh, shoot, you guys can't even see all that. Sorry. I'll put it back down because that light's going. It's one of them little luggage. Got wheels on it. It's really cool. Um, I have it that I keep a little bit of, of like miscellaneous gear in, like nothing real important. There's an extra weaver saddle in there, an old weaver saddle, and um, but that's basically it as far as that goes. There's a few knickknack things, and we'll we'll go into those. I'll show you. They're just Things that I don't normally use or things that I have multiples of. So, here we go. Let's do it. This thing is stuffed full. It, there's way too much stuff in here. Um, if you guys ever see on the walls here, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, the Rig and Rings one. Um, who is this? Sorry. Valencia rigging rings we will do on the next video. It'll be the rigging box. You know, what's in that box too? It'll be rigging. So, um, 
I had a lot of trouble starting this video up. YouTube was making me jump through hoops because of this kid thing. You have to answer all these questions. And I don't know. They didn't do that before. But these are like some extra things that I have. There's a uh, CT foot ascender. It's really big and bulky. And here's the same, here's the same uh, tool. But you can see the size difference alone. This is a Petzl Pan. I think and this is a CT foot ascend they're both foot ascenders this one's the left this one's the right so I don't use either one of these they kind of stay off to the side and are hung up um, I have like a few I don't have a lot of gear here I have like an extra this is a new rope wrench tether that I won tree stuff give it to me you can see yeah it's backwards but yeah it says tree stuff so right on Chad how you doing buddy um did I not say CMI I don't know I use a CT foot ascender but, it, it, I'm not going to go over all the extra. I have like some extra stuff here. Maybe I'll do a giveaway one day. Because I was gifted a lot of this stuff from people. What's up, Scott? And been kind of blessed, majorly blessed, by just the people I've met doing this and making videos and stuff. So, maybe I can do a giveaway and it'll help somebody who needs some climbing gear and, uh, because I've, I've met a lot of guys that have done that for me. So, you know, there's an extra rope wrench tether. Here's one of Greg's rope wrench tethers. Aluminum. Anybody interested in getting these? I would recommend. The bend helps with the tending. And I've never ran it with a zigzag. But as long as you're using the oval, you know, um, carabiners. The holes are perfect too. Um, as you can see, these are both double-eyed tethers, not single. So a little different than the single. And with this, with these devices, you know, your rope wrench would attach up here or here. And as you can see, there's a rubber gusset there to stop the wrench when it goes down onto it to keep it from smashing and messing stuff up. Greg's come up with the same idea over here on his aluminum. But this one will get in binds and bends and doesn't want to tend right. It wants to fold there where the legs are at. Don't have that problem with stuff like this. So, um, I don't know. I got, you guys can see those, can't you? There's, there's a couple rope grabs. But, uh, let me uh, let me get into this. There it is. You want a closer look? Let's do this. You guys don't need to see so much of my ugly mug. You can look at the gear closer. Uh, you see me enough. All right, but I want to make sure I can still see your comment. Yeah, I got a couple things. I, I got a, I got a couple things, Dustin. Um, here we go. What I'll kind of do is, where is it closer for you guys? That's the, the comments for me are on this side. So what I'll do is kind of shove the box over to this side, and then kind of lay gear out here and explain it. Does that work? Yeah. Uh, that's my kind of briefcase too definitely um, now I have a I got a bunch of different tethers as you can see they're uh, they kind of vary in size and length um, whether it be the width of the tether or um, you know the length I prefer this one because I think it's a little longer 
than the ones that I, the other ones that I have. So it allows me to do an extra twist or a bend when I'm doing like a VT knot or um, like the XT. This is almost brand new. This is Tuffelberger Ocean Beeline. Um, as you can see, it's shorter by quite a bit. Um, this one, I can't remember. It's like Iron something. I can't. I can't keep up with all the names. But um, let's see. I just grabbed tethers for right now. You can see how chaotic thing gets sometimes just trying to get stuff out and find certain things um, here's another one it's just an ABR it's as you can see it's a kind of rope and um, this is probably the first one I had and I broke myself in on on it I, I don't feel like it grabs as good as these so so um, that's why I kind of switched to more of a solid rope with a with a sheave that's that's totally around it instead of this sewn more braided. But I like these a lot for rigging when when I'm using them in a rigging system. So um, I have a couple. Of, yeah, here's another one. I use this one. It's pretty pretty burnt. Um, I don't know, actually it doesn't look that bad. I may start using it again. This one is from Rope Logic. And I liked it because as you yeah, it's the same as this Iron Street one. That's the name of these. Um that's a little shorter. But yeah, you need I always try to keep multiples of the tethers. They get kind of burnt and I try to circulate if you look there. You can see where it's actually burnt the rope a few times where I come down on it a little too quick. And then when you start to lose these sleeves and they start coming down, that's when I want to get new ones too because it's still good. You could use it, but and maybe I'll cut these off and just tape it. But I prefer to have that covered where they stitch it. It just feels, for me, it feels safer. So, um, there was a question about what SRT system I started on, and I'll, I'll show you wh what it was as we kind of go through here. Um, so, these are the tethers. I got another one or so over there, but it's for rigging, and I'll, sh I'll show you that. I use that on my SRT anchor point. But um, next, I got real. I got a small cambium saver that is from uh, ABR. Let's see. Um, do I use a? Sh Ooh, shoot! Do I use a shorty tether or rig? I I prefer a regular one. Um just uh, i have big hands and it kind of is just it works better for me in the rope wrench system or the the you know the the with the hitch climber and stuff so i cut into oh how are we doing why is here cool i cut into a beehive at 65 foot not long ago dang Oh man, that is a bummer. Yeah, that that we cut into a couple of them, but I just stayed really calm. I got covered in bees, but I don't know if I got footage of it. It was I worked for that last company I worked for, but before I left them. Right on, Matt. I'm glad glad that was was helpful. Um, let's see. This is, I've had a hard time, plastic coated cover over the stitches, 
Did you say keeping it? Let's see, sorry. Um, if you're looking for a rope that's plastic coated covered, I love the rope too. It comes with the plastics in the eye too that spread the eye apart and keep it open at all times. Go with all gear. I love all of my all, all gear stuff that I've that I've had. So I've never had an issue with them. They don't they've never given me anything. I everything I've ever gotten. But I've had two or three I've had yeah two or three climbing ropes of theirs. Loved both of them, the rocket line and the uh, cherry bomb. And then I my rigging rope is an all gear rope also. I use all gear rings, so I got a couple slings from all gear. Try them if you're looking for one with a plastic coating because they make the best ones. So. So you don't, let's see. Yeah, oh, are you just talking about like a, I'm trying to fix this real quick, guys, sorry. Are you just talking about a tether? Getting a tether that's got one? Oh, what did I do? Sorry, guys. Um, yeah. Ocean Beeline, it came in a little box and everything, and I bought it at like uh, K and K. Actually, it's here. It is. There it is. Uh, how much did it cost? Twenty eight sixty seven. come with all the stuff well worth it it's it's a good tether so um, if you need one with the plastic go with that I'm trying to click on my screen so I can Oh, it's so stupid. Yeah, I like it. I like all gear. So, uh, yeah, if you're looking for one, try that. Um, so, I have a big Buckingham one, too. Um, Um, I, I prefer to have, this is clear though. You can see all the stitching through that. So none of those covers, they're, they're not, they're not solid plastic. You see through. So it's not that you can't see the stitching. It's that you can keep that stitching covered so that one stitch doesn't get plucked one day on a chainsaw or something and pull it out. And then you've screwed the whole thing. Up. I prefer... If I think all of mine do, yeah, all of them that I have, so I don't know. Um, there's that. Um, this is we'll go into my first SRT setup. It was my first SRT setup was the Petzl Grigri, this system right here this trigger rope loads in here comes out locks in clips down it's a loaded cam system so as as you get into it this whole thing kicks in and it locks the cam down onto the rope as you lift this trigger you push that cam back in and it releases it if you're wanting a bunch of control with your SRT system, it's you, it, you kind of got to be a lighter guy and be really kind of weightless. You can't have a lot of weight on this, and it's it, when it goes, it, it'll drop. So, I mean, you can dial this in, but 
personally, I don't think this was probably the smartest thing I ever did when it comes to uh, SRT. It, it's, it's a good device to understand and learn everything on, but it's, it's, I don't think it's meant for, and maybe it is, I, I don't know, I use it sometimes on small climbs and stuff like that, but it's a pretty good system. Your rope doesn't, the only problem with it, most SRT systems, the rope comes down, goes into it, comes out the bottom. This goes down, comes into it, goes up through the system, and then comes out the side. So, if you look on this side, see this lip? That lip is there so that it lays over the side and, you know, it works, works real good. You can hold the rope, pressure it, lock it. You know, if you throw your line over, over this side, you're putting it over the trigger, which is locking the system. But the way this thing works is it sits down, you're tied in, it goes up to a hand ascender. The hand ascender ends up having like your foot strap hooked to here and then it ends up having this carabiner up here or this uh micro pulley and it runs a three to one system with it um i don't know that i have something here with enough rope to do it okay maybe i do So, this thing goes in like this. Rope may be too big. But it goes in and it locks. So, if you, you're you messing with it, you can pull rope through this end in 10 slack, one hand, just as much as you want. When you pull this side, if you see, it locks that cam in. It lifts it and locks it into place until you pull that trigger and it opens the cam. So this part would go up. This will be your anchor here. And let's say it goes up, anchors off. This is your rope coming out. This is going to be difficult to sell. But you would clip your hand ascender up there. This would hook off of that. Off of your hand center, and the part, the rope coming out of the system just hooks onto it, and then when you pull, you get a three to one system off of it. Plus, you have, you have this foot loop right here, which your foot goes into. That's also clicked off onto this hand ascender. And then what you'll do is just move the hand ascender up, which takes the pulley and everything with it. Um, I have a video on on the system, so if you guys want to check it out, you can always go back and do that. It's a way more in-depth explanation of it. But um, So, we went over the hand ascender. There's the, the foot strap. There was the micro pulley from Petzl. Oops. I dropped one of these off. Um, I was working on a fence line. And it, it went down and hit the fence. And I think it landed in the neighbor's yard. And she stole it and wouldn't give it back. And I just bought it. But um, there's the Petzl Grigri. Let me show you something that I do with this. And a center. If you notice, the handle has been cut there because plastic used to be there. Now, this is what I do with it. I took a bungee. I tied an alpine butterfly in it. And what I do is I turn this here into a spike ascender 
So a food ascender for your spikes. You just, this is how it works. You take this, put it through this upper hole right here on the hand ascender. Just take the loop, put it through. Actually, you want to keep the system on the back side of the hand ascender because the rope, this has got a double lock, but the rope runs up through there. I have three of these things. Or maybe I only have two. I think I gave one away. But you put that through the loop. Then you take this whole system and girth hitch it down on there. So, now, what you do is take this, take the spike on the inside of your foot, which would be here. You would take this, hook it up onto the spike, to where your spike's coming out here. Take these hooks and hook them on the top of your pad. You're only putting pressure with your, with your spikes down here. It's not going to pull on your pads up here. All the pressure is going to be here. The reason for these is to keep the system straight on your leg and keep it from shifting side to side. So a hand ascender is essentially a spike ascender if you uh, hook that little system up. Hopefully that was helpful to somebody. Just a little thing that I came up with quite a long time ago, but um, this is my chest ascender. Thanks, Dustin. Um, it is from 4SRT. It is, in my opinion, the best chest ascender that there is. It has a ton of adjustments depending on your size, where you're, where you're at there. Yeah, I figured a lot of you guys would like that idea, because if you think about it, you just need to get over that one hump sometimes, or, or just get up the trunk there, and you don't want to spike in. You, just a quick foot ascender. It goes on. I wanted to have the fastest one you could put on and take off, faster than anybody's, and I guarantee you there. There's not one on the market that you can put on and take off as quick as the one that I just showed you. I promise. Because I didn't want one, you know, a foot ascender there on my spikes because it gets in the way of the spike. I use pole spikes. So I didn't want that stuff in my way. So that was an obstacle. I have foot ascenders. I could use them. But then they're there. They're in the way. So that's what I came up with. Chest Center, 4SRT, the best one in my opinion. This is my favorite foot ascender. It is a CT. Really nice. Locks in. And I have, I use a Haas Classic Knee Ascender. The knots and adjustableness in this allows me to have more bounce in it if I need it. So I'll lift that knot or lower it. So um, this part here hooks to your wherever on your system. So that it tends itself and bounces up. But it's essentially just another ascender grabber with a uh, foot strap on it that adjusts here. So you can cinch it down. But a real good, a well needed piece if you're going to do SRT, in my opinion. So um, I don't know why that thing's out so far now. I don't like it. Yeah, that doesn't seem right. It's about time for me to get another Nia Center. Even though this one looks good. Yeah, 
Alright, well, before I run a bunch of y'all, because I zone out, um, so, my everyday foot ascender, my everyday knee ascender, my chest harness, and then, I use a rope wrench, guys. You guys probably all know that. This one was given to me, the whole rope wrench, and tether was from Cheryl Tree. Um, it is a Kevin Bingham signature series. Black on one side, red on the other. Um, I don't know. It's a single eye. But it does have this loop here, so I can clip on my chest ascender, which is really nice. I've heard people say that they put them on the opposite way, but I like it this way. This one's set up real nice. This little extra additional loop here is uh, it's really good. So, how you like the jet step? Is it good? Oh, you didn't really like it. Oh, see, I heard it was really hard to get it open and get clicked on. That CT is so nice. It's so light. It's so compact. But, um, let me get through this, guys, and then I'm, I'm going to call it an evening. Like I said, I'm pretty tired, but this is one of my favorites. So, how we doing, Brush Life? With that system, always comes... I use the uh, Hitch Climber from DMM. It needs cleaned, but essentially gives you the three plugins. Um, I usually will run my wrench down here. Then I have the top one for like a clip, and then for a uh, or no, actually, I run it in reverse. It's my chest harness goes here sometimes, then my rope wrench, then down here goes my Haas knee ascender. This was the original pulley that you get when you buy a rope wrench with the original system. Yeah, <laughs> you did just walk into this conversation just a little bit, but. Um, it's the ISC, you know, it come with that tether that I showed you guys originally for, from Tree Stuff. It has the bigger eyes. I don't know if that's meant so that you can get two carabiners in that. I didn't like it. I don't really use this much. So, um, other than that... There's another piece that I don't ever use, which I plan on doing, but I don't do a lot of trolley and stuff. But I use it sometimes for spider rigging. Clip into that, clip there, clip there, or just put ropes off. But it's a just a a plate, a rigging plate from DMM. I think it's the bear paw or something like that, or something like it. It's a uh, it's nice. I guess I've used it a few times, but I don't get a ton of use out of something like this. Um, I plan on doing more elaborate stuff, but then I just end up wanting to get the job done and make money for the day. Oh, uh, here is my rope wrench from Greg. I need to repaint. He, uh, if you guys look there, he's Greg is the best. He etched in steel born for me but this has the original ISC rope wrench which is really nice I like it it's from singing tree just like the rest comes with the quickie here the nice thing about these is that when you if you pay attention when you clip this thing out you get a certain amount of gap but if you spin it It'll lock down right there. There's a gap, like a little spot where it drops down. And you get just a little bit more room right there. So you can get a rope through. And then it goes up, and it almost you can't really get a rope through there. But just that extra little spin, 
got a little spot. Really, really just an awesome wrench tether. If you look at that curve there, that curve works so perfect and sets this wrench into such a perfect spot here that you're going, rope's going straight through there and it's tendon like butter. So, Greg Brown. Now, what I have, carabiners. Just a buttload of them. I don't know. I have a few from Petzl. These ones here came with my Grigri setup. Then I bought that one to go with it. I think it's another. Yeah, it's another Petzl. Later on, I bought another climber gear because he got out of it. He bought a bunch of gear and then got out of climbing and sold it all to me. So I had like extra saddles and carabiners. Um, some regular beaners from Rock Exotica. I like these that are triple locking. I'm going to grease everything, clean it tonight or tomorrow. But uh, yeah, I have quite a few of these. If you notice, they're all the same. Those are my go to's. I prefer them. This one also, Rock Exotica, is just, it's the pear shaped or whatever. This is a really good beaner from uh, Climbing Technology, I think. Yeah, CT. And it's got the snappiest bridge on it. It is so strong. It does not want to open. Like, the spring there is stronger than any of them that I've ever used. It is just crazy. Like, I think I'd, it hurt if I smashed my finger with that thing. But, another good, really good beaner. This one is from Eldred. It's aluminum. It is awesome carabiner. But, it is more squared off on the sides which I don't like. I prefer a round one. These squared off ones sometimes can get in a bind. They work really good for clipping into beaners. But this one's a triple locking also. You lift this. Then you pull down on that trigger. Then it opens. If you try to just pull down on that trigger, nothing. If you try just to pull up on that, nothing. You gotta pull up on that. Do that. That kind of stuff isn't ideal when you only have one hand and you're trying to throw a you know a lanyard around or something so that's where i you almost prefer these but the problem with the petzl ones they twist in the opposite direction that all other carabiners do which is weird so i don't understand that this one is from fusion i bought two carabiners from fusion and don't know a lot about the company they're rated they're say ANSI approved um, this one I really like it's a screw locking one that um, goes really good with the Grigri because of the shape then this thing's really cool this is not climbing gear but if you look at this this is to make a handle on a rope so if you have a guy that's trying to pull your pull line and he can't get a grip you just take it kind of like your figure eight I think yeah and you lock it in and it gives you a, a handle on the line right there it has a bunch of different ways that it works um like another one where it loops around there comes through and goes back through there but yeah a cool little tool that i thought eh, i could get some use out of it yeah it goes through like that locks in so i think i got it for like five bucks at a hardware store it's not but I knew I could use it for a ground guy or something silly. Who knows? Redirect a line a little bit. 
with the pool. Other than that, I only keep one figure eight in my climbing box. It is also, well, nope, this from Climb Right. It came in that box of stuff I got from that climber. Oh, I have the heaviest throw ball in the world. I wrap my throw balls in plastic a lot of time, or in uh, duct tape, because most of the casings are crap. And after a couple times they hit the ground, they spray everywhere, so that's why they look like this. This is a Delta. It's a little triangle screw locking. These little things work really good hooking on, you know, grapple hooks, um, those foot straps and stuff to the hand defender. Other than that, I use these little straps for so I'll put that through over the top. Take this, wrap it around my leg, clip it. So, it's just a junk little strap. I think I have another one here somewhere. But with a little clip tied to the end of it. Because I'm not paying all that money to get those stupid straps. Other than that. In here. I really don't think there's anything special. There's another hand ascender. Inside this here is a throw ball, retrieval ball from Buckingham. And that retrieves your your um, cambium savers out of the air. Nowadays it looks like they make them little bungees. And they look like they would actually work. Inside here. This is a little grapple hook for my throw ball. So I can do transfers from tree to tree. I have a video. I don't. I can't even remember the name. But. It's got me transferring from one oak tree to a pine tree, but when you throw your throw ball line up over the other limb over here, you tie this to one end of the line, and you drop the ball down, and it brings this to it, and if you leave some slack in it there, it'll go up under it and hook your line and bring your throw ball back to you. Another figure eight. Some silly clips. Look at that silly clip. What the heck is that? Used to use these for like some speed line um, to hold them all. For the straps. That's a Allen wrench so that I can take my rope wrenches and stuff apart. Another stupid clip. <laughs> There's another throw ball. Hey, I can't remember who it was that told me this, but one of you guys, I, thank you, at, if you guys have a Menards anywhere around you, they have throw balls and throw string. This is a forestry throw ball. I think it's like a 12 ounce really perfect size a good a good throw ball but they do bust open so I wrapped it in duct tape instantly but you get that and <laughs> I think I bought this throw ball one time for like 30 bucks. 20 30 bucks. Um, so when I want to, when I went to Menards, they had a whole thing of string, 166 foot, pretty good string, and the throw ball for ten dollars. Hey, Dave, what's up? Um, 
10 bucks for this the the dual thing i think all together i ended up paying like 60 for the two of them because they would break them down but yeah menards right now for ten dollars in this bag this is right here you guys if you see my videos you know what that is this is my anchor system for my srt it's adjustable it goes through this it goes in this bag and is behind my seat always so that I have it like I said here's a little saddle that's in that bag there's how I hang up my salt right there I take the clip that is on those things and break it off and then I just use the ring on the back of the chainsaw to clip right to that it's easy it's cheap inexpensive also Buckingham cambium saver now this thing is goofy there's another chainsaw lanyard that I may or may not have cut a couple times I don't know why but for some reason I got like a dent puller maybe I plan on putting dents and stuff who knows um, this thing I bought I literally bought this so that I could okay I don't know if any of you guys know the X-Man JD um, Dave he is the one that invented the X rings made the safe block all that stuff well I got this for like 20 bucks at a hardware store one time it is not what the that's it's this is an old blade case for a handsaw but look at this thing. Oh, God damn it. Last time I used it, I used it on a pine tree and it was sap covered so hot and mashed in here. I'll be doing good to get it out. Dang it. That's a bummer. I'll get it. Guys, I am giving it all I got. It does not want to come off of that. Now, you know what? I'm going to cut this case to pieces because it's aggravated me while I'm live here and embarrassed me. So, how do we that case? It's the world's smallest, biggest safe block. Anchors here. Then you can weave it out. This is actually meant for anchors. I believe for roofs. But you can take, and I actually used it for small rigging, and just ran it through, up through here, there, then there. Bend radius is not good at all. It's really skinny. But I use it for an anchor point. If we need to wrap around something, it gives us multiple anchors to it. But it's a neat little little anchor system. But I bought it just to mess with JD. I said, look what I bought. And I put the Cheryl sticker on there. And I sent him pictures. And he freaked out. And I let it go for a little bit. And then we laughed about it. But yeah, pretty cool. Other than that, guys. I keep some extra throw ball string in there. That's it. I've emptied out all my gear. I've made a huge mess. And now you guys all get to go home and I gotta clean it up. But regardless, hope you guys had fun. Had a blast, you know, going back and forth with you guys, showing you some of the stuff. Um if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I'll, I'll definitely answer them. I 
I hear a lot of YouTubers say that they answer their questions. And when I look and they don't, it's pretty funny. But I answer my questions. If you guys got any questions, I do my best. If I skip it or I miss it, you may have to say it again. But just so you guys know, YouTube does not notify me if you respond to me. It only notifies me when you make your initial comment. So if you respond to, like, okay, you leave a comment, then I comment to it. If you say something back, it does not let me know. I have to go back in and go through everything just to find out. But I do a lot because I don't want you guys thinking I'm just ignoring you being a dick. So, if I miss your comment, say it again, please. If I can help anybody with anything, let me know. You guys have an excellent 2020. I'll get some more videos out soon. And I uh, appreciate you guys hanging around. Be good, guys. Stay safe.